serve this opportunity. Ushers are, we need ushers there are signs to serve one Sunday a month. We have three Sundays listed in the calendar insert with openings for individual volunteers as an usher. Please contact Tom Brown, who is in the back, or the church office if you can serve on the Sundays listed in, in the calendar. And please check the insert of the calendar so we all know what's going on in the church this week. Pastor Beth invites you to have pastries and conversation with her in the Fellowship Center next week and the first week of August. These meetings will be in groups of six. Monday will be afternoons, Tuesday will be mornings, and Wednesday will be evening meetings. Please let her know if you cannot meet on any of the available days and she will make other arrangements to meet with you. A sign-up sheet is on the back welcome table where the pretty sunflowers are. Second Sunday social will be held on August 11 at Mexico County. The sign up sheet is also available on the sign up table. ACO Food Pantry has released the list for their current needs. The list is on the back of your calendar insert and can be found on the website. And please don't forget about Work is Heart, which is also listed there. Now, please join me in the call to worship. Come, let us worship and praise God. The Lord is our shepherd, our guardian, and our guide. Celebrate the many ways in which God cares for our lives. Green pastures and silent soul lovers beckon us and comfort us. Even though difficulties happen in our lives, still God is with us. Even when it seems that the world has nothing to offer but suffering and pain, God surrounds us with God's love and kindness. Surely God's mercy is accompanying us on our journey, and we will dwell in the house of God forever. Amen. so many ways we can refer to you. So much you have done for us. So much you have shown us, and we are so thankful. We give thanks constantly for all you are and for all you have done. We give thanks for the lives you have you've given us, and for all the many gifts, the many possibilities that exist for us because of you. Words alone cannot express our gratitude. But we know there is another side to all of that. That side which takes those gifts and hides them away. Takes those gifts and refuses to use them for your work. Or worse, 
<laughs> those of us who don't believe we have any gifts at all to offer. And thereby, we deny what you have done. Lord, in all those moments when we are, we are forgetful, when we are denying you, we can only ask for your forgiveness. We can only ask that you would empower us to move forward, to continue the journey you have laid out for us. Empower us to use everything we have received from you for your work so that others may also hear of you and hear of your son. This day we know there is so much in our world that that we need to lift in prayer. Those, those places that are still under threats of violence, those war zones where, where your people are crying out, hear their cries, help them to understand that you are truly with them even then. For those areas in the American West that are being scorched literally by these wildfires, be with those who are in the path, be with all of those who are fighting these fires for their safety and their protection. Be with us gathered here this day as we, as we lift hopeful hearts to receive your word, to understand your word just a little bit more. Specifically, Lord, this day, we lift up these close to us as we continue to keep the Washburn family, the Castleberry family, and the Stalin family in our prayers. We lift in our prayers also Karen, Carl, Anne, we lift up Grayson, Kathy, Susan, we lift up Angie and Honor, Ryan and Carrie, we lift up Kathy, Jackie, and Patsy. Lord, hear all these prayers that we lift to you. Yes. Prayers for healing, prayers for wholeness, yes. prayers for peace. Yes. As we lift them all in the name of your precious Son, who taught us all to pray, saying, <coughs> Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And live it is not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Okay, before I go any further, I have a question for you all. I received feedback last week that I was standing too close to the sun. Is this okay? Yeah. <laughs> you really don't want me in the shadows. <laughs> Our scripture for today comes from the book of Acts the ninth chapter, verses 36 through 43. This is the word of our Lord. Now in Joppa, there was a disciple whose name was Tabitha, which in Greek is Dorcas. She was devoted to good works and to acts of charity. At that time, she became ill and died. When they had washed her, they laid her in a room upstairs. Since Lida was near Joppa, the disciples who heard that Peter was there sent two men to meet him with the request. Please come to us without delay. So Peter got up and went with them. And when he arrived, they took him to the room upstairs. All the widows stood beside him, weeping and showing tunics and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was with them. Peter put all of them outside, and then he knelt down and prayed. He turned to the body and said, Tabitha, get up. And she opened her eyes, and seeing Peter, she sat up. He gave her his hand and helped her up. Then calling the saints and the widows, he showed her to be alive. This became known throughout Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. Meanwhile, he stayed in Joppa for some time with a certain Simon, a tanner. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. So again, thank you all for being with us today, whether you're here in this room or in another room joining us um, online. It is truly Truly our prayer that we do receive 
of rich blessing from our Lord this day. I do need to thank those of you who are wearing name tags. I'm still getting to know y'all, and I'm really, I'm getting better at putting names and faces together, so thank you. Yeah. But now I'm going to take this next step, and I want more than just a name that goes with a face. I want to hear a little bit more about you, and that's what our small group meetings will be all about. Will be a chance to hear a little bit about you, but a little bit about, let's say, your relationship with the church. Right. There'll be a little bit of spoilers coming ahead. But just, I'm really looking forward to this time so that we can all be working together as we grow our church. Now, over the last, oh, the last three weeks, I've been sharing with you a little bit about who I am. And I started off by sharing some of the spiritual disciplines I follow, prayer and Sabbath. Last week, I shared a bit about why I am a United Methodist. Now, I'm pretty sure three weeks about me is about as much as y'all want to take. So we're going to turn the mirror around. And it's on you. Who are you? Who are you? Let that question just kind of marinate in your mind for a few moments as we take a look at our scripture. In the scripture, we see Peter arriving at what he thinks is just your regular, normal, everyday, average pastoral care call. <laughs> Someone's friend has died, and what do they do? They call the head pastor. And Peter, Peter understands the seriousness of it, so he arrives quickly. He's greeted with, with a lot of solemn faces. He's greeted with a lot of tears and crying. There were hugs, there were loving touches for everyone who was grieving, and the house is full of mourners. Those widows who had received the love and compassion of a woman named Tabitha. She was also known as Dorcas, which by the way, I love that name. Now Tabitha, she inhabited a rather interesting world. First of all, she is called a disciple. This is the only time in the New Testament, that a woman is called a disciple. Other places, they're acknowledged as believers, but she is the only disciple. And we also get two names for her. One a Jewish name, and the other a Greek name. And this, this makes her a bit of a cultural hybrid. She, she's able to straddle that cultural line between two worlds, that line between Judaism and the wider Greco-Roman world. She would have been at home in the cultural confines of her faith. She would have been at home also in all those different cultures that surrounded her. As Peter makes his way through the crowd, the widows, they start telling stories. And that's what we do, isn't it? When someone dies as a part of our mourning, well, we tell stories. We share memories. And apparently remembering Tabitha meant remembering her craft. We're told the widows stood beside Peter, weeping and showing him tunics and other clothing that she made while she was with them. And I can imagine, I can imagine many of them were wearing some of these, some of these pieces of clothing, some of these tunics. And it really seems like a wonderful tribute to Tabitha, sort of a, a living fashion show the work of her hands walking around, while stories are being told of her, of her love and compassion. It was the fashion show of her life. They were showing her off by showing off her handiwork. Now, imagine with me, because I can picture it so well. They're all gathered, they're talking. See this tunic? Isn't it beautiful? Tabitha made it for me. Oh, I just love this. And, and, and you see that scarf that Margaret's wearing? Tabitha wove that especially for her. And Mary? Oh, Mary's got another one of the tunics that Tabitha made. That's another beautiful one. Tabitha just loves... Oh. Tabitha just loved to do this work. She loved to do this work with us and for us. We're really going to miss her. <clears throat> what we do when a loved one dies. We call the preacher, we show off who the person was, and we tell stories about them. 
And I'll be honest, I know you all have stories that you tell when the preacher's not around. <laughs> That's okay. As we look at Tabitha, we hear these stories that are being told about her. And she is known, she is remembered by her good works. The clothing she made, and that can't be all she did. There, there, there's probably other acts of charity that define her. Perhaps the widows who are showing off her work were also cared for by Tabitha. All of her good works are woven together. This is how she's remembered. And remembering her and her works, the other widows are letting Peter know just how deeply she will be missed. Now, in our faith heritage, we're known by what we do. John Wesley, the founder of the Methodist movement, he was known for acts of charity, for works of charity. The early Methodists were known in their communities for the ways in which they ministered to human need. And Tabitha's life, Tabitha's life calls us to ponder our works and our, well, our place in the Christian community. So I wonder, how are we known in our community? By what works are we known? <clears throat> if you, Individually, if you were gone tomorrow, how would you be remembered? Oh, what a blessing Cheryl was to the church. I mean, she did everything. She ran the place. I'm pretty sure she would have offered the word on Sunday morning if she needed to. <laughs> Janet, oh, God, what a sweet soul. Janet had such a heart for missions. Jim, Jim was always around the church. He would do whatever needed to be done. So much of what we see was because Jim put it in place. Y'all get the idea? We remember people, we speak of people by what they did. And in remembering, we give life to their actions. So, how would you be remembered? How do you want to be remembered? This question, is not just for us as individuals. Now I want you to challenge, I want to challenge you for a moment. Think about this, think about how this relates to the church. If this church were to die tomorrow, how would it be remembered? If this church were to close its doors tomorrow and never be reopened, how would it be remembered? And before you all start making any rumors, it's a hypothetical question. Are we clear? So hypothetically speaking, if the church were to close, how would it be remembered? Seriously, how is Good Shepherd United Methodist Church known? By what actions are we known? Or what is our one good mission? What is our one good ministry? How do people outside of our walls know us? How do they know who we are? Are we known by our works? And if so, what are we known for? Let that sink in. What is our one good mission? How are we being the hands and feet of Christ in our community? So let me step back for a minute and explain what I mean by one good mission. One good mission is that one, well, that one thing a church is known for. And for, for many churches, their, their one good mission, it, it follows a theme. Maybe that theme is children. They are known for phenomenal children's ministries. They have a great preschool, they have a wonderful Sunday school, their BBS is the talk of the summer activities, they have other summer activities, they have after school activities, but they're also out in the community taking care of the children, taking care of the needs of children and families. Maybe, maybe it's a church that's, that's known for a medical ministry. That's the place you go to for your back-to-school vaccines. Maybe there's a once-a-month health clinic. Maybe, maybe it's a church that's also out in the community seeking to take care of others. Or maybe, maybe it's a church known for music, a music ministry program that is absolutely wonderful. Great music and worship, summer music camps, regular recitals, but there's also those trips that they take, sharing their music with others, holding concerts to raise money, not for the church, 
but for a specific cause, a specific mission. Maybe maybe a church is known simply for a specific program that is open to the community. So I wonder, what is the one good mission here at Good Shepherd? How are we known? And since I'm still learning, you guys got to help me out. What are the active missions of Good Shepherd? What are we doing right now? And that is not a rhetorical question. I expect feedback. I'm walking into the light. I'm sorry. How are we known? We're known for something good, aren't we? I found you because on Saturdays there's a group that uh, has drive through prayer okay. that I thought was your church, but apparently you rented to them the facility on Saturday to them, and that's how I found you. So okay. you're open to other organizations using your facility. Okay. So our openness to others, specifically the SDA congregation. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. How else are we known in this community? Very friendly. Okay, we're a very friendly church. Let's bring it down to our missions. How are we reaching people? Dorcas Hart, ACO. ACO, the All Community Outreach, online. our online presence. Mm -hmm. So there's different ways we're reaching out. Forever Young Fellowship. The Forever Young Fellowship and our Wednesday Seniors Program. Okay. Anything else? Actually, Andy Lewis recommends your exercise program on Tuesday for prayer service. A recommendation for our exercise program. So a lot of different ways we're reaching out. But now here's the follow-up question. How do you want to be known? How do you want to be known in this community? What do you want the one good mission to be? And as I hear what you're looking up, there's a there's a, a fragile thread running together there. And that's of senior ministries. Is that the thread we want to follow? Or is there something else we want to follow? What do we want our one good mission to be? Now, you're going to hear about it again, our small group meetings. Because one of the things I want to talk about in the small group meetings, I'm going to ask these questions again. I'm going to ask in a smaller format that's not recorded. What are we known for? What is our one good mission? And who do we really want to be? Who do we want to be as a church? If we were gone, would anybody really miss us? If we left tomorrow, what sort of show would be given to commemorate our life? If this church was gone tomorrow, what sort of remembrance would be given to indicate that we were ever here? If we were gone tomorrow, what sort of remembrance would be given indicate that we were ever here. I believe it comes down to an intentional choice. We can be, we can claim to be Christians surrounded by the grace of God and we can keep it all to ourselves. We can work to maintain the club, if you will. Or, or we can take everything that we have received and we can share it with others as Jesus called us to. We can be intentional about growing the kingdom. Now, I believe churches should be known for how they represent Christ. They should be known for building the kingdom, not maintaining the club. Okay, quick quiz. Who's a kingdom builder? Who wants to keep the club going? Good answers. And Tabitha's story, she took everything she had. And she took what she knew. For her, it was a skill with sewing. And she used this to share with others, to help others. 
Perhaps her work was her opening to share the good news of Jesus Christ with another. And when she died, her works lived on, and she was remembered for her actions as well as for her faith. But her story, her story didn't end. Because Peter comes into her room and prays. We're not told what this prayer is about, but we know Peter was intentional in prayer. And after he prays, he looks at her body and commands her to get up. And she does. And all the saints, all the widows, they're called in. And Peter shows them, Tabitha is still alive. Now surely, surely they celebrated this great miracle. Surely they celebrated that their friend was still alive. Surely they celebrated she would still be a vital part of the community, working with others, sharing with others. Now, from what I do know about the history of Good Shepherd, I believe there is much that can be celebrated about who we were. But I don't believe our story exists in history. Looking forward, who will we become? I had a chance to drive around with this this past week. And I was really struck by how many new subdivisions have gone in. How many new houses are there? Um, many of you know we lived in this area, oh well, we moved about seven years ago. And in those seven years, oh my, the work of this place has exploded. And as I'm driving around, I'm getting rather optimistic about what our mission field looks like. Anybody else? Optimistic about, about the people moving to Lucas. People that we we have a chance to be in ministry with. And it makes me wonder, how does this community really see us? Do they see us as people who represent Christ in the community? When we hear stories of the early church, we're reminded that the early believers, they had far less, far less than we do. But they were so empowered by the Holy Spirit that they went out and they changed the world. Can we take all that we have been given? Can we take all of our gifts and our talents and our abilities? Can we take all that we are and continue to change the world? Who are you? Who do you want to be? Shalom. Amen.
Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of everlasting.
do have two quick things I want to say. The first is, okay, this is the third time I'm saying it today, and it's the last time I'm saying it today. Small groups, if you haven't signed up, please do. You have figured it out by now. This is kind of important to me, and I'd really like to see you all there and get a chance to have the conversation. Secondly, if you're one of those that Sunday worship is just not complete without a chance for a cup of coffee and a donut and some fellowship time, we got you covered. Down the hallway, in the kitchen, third door on the left, somewhere around there. <laughs> Second door on the left. Um, we have coffee, we have donuts, and you're welcome to come share with one another conversation and a nice hot cup of coffee. Thank you. Surrounded by the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.